Hi everyone, welcome to this review where we're going to go over the first four lessons of Algebra 1. We're talking about variables and expressions, order of operations, the number properties, and the distributive property. Let's take a look. Ready? Number 1 says translate the expression. It says 3 times the difference of y and 5. So if I'm doing 3 times a difference, I have to make sure I'm doing 3 times the entire difference. Difference means subtraction. So 3 times the entire difference of y minus 5 is added by, so that means plus, 6 squared. Now 6 squared would mean 6 to the second power. So when I look at my options here, I can tell it happens to be the very last one. Notice the first one, answer choice here, doesn't have 3 times the entire y minus 5, and also 6 times 2 is not what it means to square something. Squaring something means to multiply it by itself and the other options you can see are definitely not correct. Number two, translate the expression seven less than x. Seven less than x. There are four flipping words, from, into, than, and to. When you see any of these four flipping words, you have to reverse and flip the value before and after. So if I say seven less than x, than is one of my flipping words, which means 7 less than x actually means x minus 7. If I put it as 7 minus x, that's not what 7 less than x means. Imagine you had $10. If I have 7 less than you, aren't you really doing 10 minus 7? You're not doing 7 minus 10. You do have to flip that order. Number three, five subtracted from twice x. And look, from is another flipping word. So if I say five subtracted from twice x, if you do something twice, that means you did it two times, right? So that would look like two x and then minus five. Gotta be extra careful on that. Number four, translate. So this one looks like 10 increased by so I'm going to look at the answer choices here. 10 increased by 3 times x, looks good, is multiplied by 8. No, that's not what's happening at the end there. 10 added by the product, ooh, product means the answer to a multiplication problem, it, of 3 and x is subtracted by 8. That one actually looks pretty good. Third one, the sum of 10 and 3 is multiplied by x. No, that actually means that 10 plus 3 would be added, and then that would get multiplied by x, and that's not what's happening. 10 plus the quotient of 3 and x? No, quotient means division, so that's no good. Number five, oh, same idea. Let's go through and check each, an an each answer. So the first one says 6 multiplied by y, sounds good so far, plus 3 times y minus 8. Now if I was to really translate that, it would be 6 multiplied by y plus 3 times y minus 8. It doesn't actually call for the parentheses there, the second one, 6 multiplied by y is decreased by, oh, immediately now. Uh, the third one, the product of 6 and y added by 3 times the difference. So when you see times the difference, it's times the entire amount, and that looks perfect to me. Last one I know is no good because notice it says sum of y and 8. So it looks like the third one is correct. Number six, we're going to simplify this expression using our order of operations. So first of all, when we do order of operations, we have to remember we're doing our parentheses or our grouping symbols, right, brackets, anything like that. Then we do exponents, then we multiply and divide in order from left to right, and then we add and subtract from left to right. So when I'm looking at five minus six times two, plus eight times 10 over two, what I need to do is look at my parentheses. Is there anything to simplify inside those parentheses? No. Do I have any exponents? No. Do I have any multiplying or dividing? Yes. Now, I can do these at the same time because they happen to be separated by this plus sign here. When you have operations separated by a plus or minus sign, you can attack them at the same time. So this would really look like five minus, six times two is 12, plus eight times 10 divided by two is five. Do I still have any dividing or multiplying to do? Yes, I do. I have eight times five to take care of, so now this is five minus 12 plus 40. Last step, we do addition and subtraction in order from left to right. So I need to do five minus 12 first is negative seven plus 40, and then negative seven plus 40 is positive 33. Next one, number seven, more simplifying. So here I have 40 
divided by 2 to the third plus 2 open bracket 10 plus 2 open parenthesis rather 3 minus 1 okay uh, do I have anything in my grouping symbols yes I have two grouping symbols so when you have that you have to work your way from the inside out so I'm going to do 3 minus 1 first, but I'm also going to take care of 2 to the 3rd at the same time because it's a completely different part of the problem separated by this plus sign here. So because it's separated by that, I can totally take care of it. Now this would become 40 divided by, let's see, 2 to the 3rd is 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. I'm going to bring everything else down, but I am going to simplify the fact that 3 minus 1 is 2. Now I still have brackets. And inside the brackets I have 10 plus two or two times two. What do I do first? Do I add or I multiply? I multiply first, so I'm gonna do that part first, but I can also take care of that division problem out front at the same time. 40 divided by eight is five plus two, open bracket, 10 plus four. Still have to simplify what's in my brackets. Do not add five plus two, I cannot do that yet. I have to simplify what's here first, so this would be 5 plus 2 times 14. Finish up that multiplication there, this would be 5 plus 28, and 5 plus 28 happens to be 33. Same answer as the last problem, it's kind of funny. Number 8. Number 8 says 5 squared minus 3 times 4 plus 8 all over 7 plus 2 times 5 minus 2 squared. Okay, so when we do a problem with a fraction, we take care of the numerator and we take care of the denominator. And at the very, very end, we divide, we simplify it. So in my numerator, I don't have anything inside of parentheses to simplify, but I do have an exponent. 5 squared means 5 times 5, which is 25. I'm going to bring the rest of it down. In my denominator, I do have an expression inside grouping symbols that I have to simplify. So this becomes seven plus two times three squared. Okay, in my numerator, I see I have some multiplication to do. So I have 25 minus 12 plus eight. In my denominator, after parentheses and grouping symbols comes exponents, and I do have an exponent, I have three to the second. So this becomes seven plus two times three squared is nine. My numerator, I do addition and subtraction in order from left to right. So 25 minus 12 gets me 13 plus eight. In my denominator, I have to do my multiplication first. So this becomes seven plus 18. 13 plus eight is 21. Seven plus 18 is 25. And I cannot simplify that any further. And so 21 over 25 is my final answer. Number nine, a little evaluating here. So this is also just still the order of operations, but we have to plug numbers in carefully and then evaluate. So here it says A is negative two, B is three, and C is five. So that means where I see an A, I'm going to plug in a negative two. Minus four times B, B is three, plus three times C, C is five. Exponents. Negative two squared, what's negative two times negative two? Well, a negative times a negative is a positive. Anytime you square a negative, it's always positive. Minus four times three, plus three times five. No more exponents, do I have any multiplying going on? Yep, I have two sets and I can actually do them at the same time. So this would be four minus four times three is 12 plus three times five is 15. I do my adding and subtracting in order from left to right. Four minus 12 is negative eight, and negative eight plus 15 will get me positive seven. Number 10, same skill, same skill. So this one says six A plus seven B minus five C. So my A is five, so six times five plus seven times one minus five times negative three. This is actually just all multiplication. So ready, six times five is 30 plus seven times one is seven 
And then negative 5 times negative 3, a negative times a negative is a positive, positive 15. 30 plus 7 is 37, and 37 plus 15 is 52. Number 11, what property is shown? 6 plus 0 equals 6. When you add 0, the answer is identical to what you started out with. When you add 0, the answer is identical to what you started out with. That is what's called the additive identity. When you add zero, the result is identical to the original answer. It didn't change the value. Number 12, when you take any rational number and you multiply it by its reciprocal, so 2 thirds times 3 over 2, you always get 1. Because think about what happens here. What's 2 times 3? 2 times 3 is 6. What's 3 times 2? 6. And what's 6 over 6? 1. Okay? That is called, so you're multiplying, okay, so it's multiplicative. You are multiplying. Um, is it an identity? Are you multiplying something and getting the same result at the end? No. Uh, reciprocals of each other are called inverses. So this is what's called the multiplicative inverse. Number 13, which property is used to show? So 7 times negative 5 plus 5 minus 8 times 3 became 7 times 0 and then minus 8 times 3. So the only thing that changed is that negative 5 plus 5 became 0. One of our properties says that if we add the opposites, now, the opposites in math, opposite signs, are also called inverses. If I add opposite signs, I get zero every time, and that's what happened here. It's called the additive inverse. Number 14, which property was used here? So we start off with 8 minus 4 times 2 plus 3 times 2 plus 5. We end up with everything getting brought down, but that little 2 plus 5 became a 7. So 2 plus 5 became a 7. Now I don't recall any properties special about adding 5 um, or adding 2. They have, they're not inverses. I'm not multiplying by 0 or 1. I'm not adding 0. When you're just kind of simplifying, we use the word of substitution. Okay, anytime we're replacing values for something that they're equal to, and it's not one of those special identities or um, inverses, it's just simply referred to as substitution. Number 15. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to simplify this step by step, and we're going to list the properties that we used each time we went, and then we have to order them on the screen. So this is the original. So. What I have to do first here, if I looked at this, I'd say, oh, I have to do the multiplying first, which you can see was done. This became negative 6 plus 6 plus 5 minus 3. How did I go from 6 times 1 to 6? That is the multiplicative. So I multiplied. I got the same answer. 6 times 1 is 6. That's an identity. So multiplicative identity I'm going to put first. Whoops. Okay. Then in the next step of work, okay, I add and subtract in order from left to right. So 6 minus 6, uh, negative 6 plus 6 is the next step. It became 0. So 0 plus 5 minus 3. The fact that I can add opposite signs and get 0 means it's called the additive. They're opposite signs, which means it's inverses. So additive inverse is second, which it already is. Okay. Then I'm going to go to the next part, 0 plus 5 is 5. When you add by 0, you get the same answer. So that's the additive identity. So additive identity is the third step. And the last step, 5 minus 3 just gets me 2, and that is simple substitution. I'm just simplifying it, and I'm good to go. Numbers 16 and 17 are all about the distributive property. So distributive property, we know that we use multiplication, and we just have to use it very carefully. We don't want to miss anything. Um, so when I'm looking at this, 4 times 3x, 4 times 3 is 12, so it's 12x. 
Then when I do 4 times negative 7y, 4 times negative 7 is negative 28y. Then 4 times 8z is positive 32z. I have to make sure that I distribute that 4 to all three parts of what's inside the parentheses. Biggest mistake is students do the first part correct, but then they forget the rest. They forget to keep distributing, and they bring down negative 7y and positive 8z. That's the biggest mistake usually. Okay, number 17. We're going to simplify again using the distributive property, but this time we're distributing a negative. So we have negative 2, and then 5x plus 6y minus 8z. So when we distribute here, we have to carefully distribute that negative 2 every single time. So negative 2 times 5x, negative 2 times 5x is negative 10x. Then we have to do negative 2 times 6y. Negative 2 times positive 6 is a negative 12y. Negative 2, again, times negative 8z, and negative 2 times a negative 8, and negative times a negative is a positive, it would be positive 16z. Gotta watch those signs. Number 18, select the two ways to show 3 times 28. So 3 times 28, um, using the distributive property. So 3 times 28 really means I could do 3 times 20 plus 8. That means the same thing. I mean, do you agree that 20 plus 8 is really just 28? Isn't that the same thing? So that's one way you can represent it. But you can also represent 28 as a subtraction problem. 28 is really 30 minus 2. So I can also set it up that way because 30 minus 2 is the same as 28. Translate and simplify. So I've got the last two problems here are the same skill. They're an important skill because they carry in a bunch of things together. So I have to first of all translate. So when I go to translate, let me get my screen good. All right, so three times the difference. So three times the difference of x and two. So x minus two is added by five times the sum of x and seven. So now I need to distribute three times x is 3x, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Don't bring down that plus sign, just keep distributing. 5 times x is 5x, and then 5 times 7 is 35. I combine like terms, so 3x plus 5x is 8x, and then negative 6 plus 35 is positive 29. So I have 8x plus 29. Awesome. Last one. Let's translate this. So I have 2 times the sum of 3x plus y subtracted by 4 times the sum of x plus 5y. Okay. So ready? 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 times y is positive 2y. Careful, do not bring down the minus sign. This time we are distributing a negative four. So negative four times x is negative four x. Negative four times positive five y is a negative 20 y. Last step, I combine like terms. Six x minus four x is two x. Positive two y minus 20 y is negative 18 y. And that is it. I hope this review was helpful. Good luck on your quiz. Bye.